y'all what's up it's your favorite 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 auntie mo and once again i am back y'all we are back for another episode review of love after lockup life after lockup this is season two episode 46 um confession before we get into the review y'all if y'all have not done so just check on here subscribe to my channel before you leave let me know that you stopped by give me a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all let me take this off my arm my arm i got a little arthritis in my elbow so i gotta wear this dumbass brace oh this motherfucker hurt like a motherfucker um if you're a returning subscriber thank y'all so much look here if you all joined me in my live last night it was popping okay if you missed it i feel bad for you everybody that joined me in my live last night thank y'all so much we had so much fun we had us a good little old kiki. We was already watching Love After Lockup. So, you know, I still got a back door with the little review or whatever. Because last night, child, after I got off the live with y'all, I got to drinking some more. Um, Because, you know, we were still celebrating our anniversary. Um, What is this in my hair? As well as um celebrating um what that Valentine's Day. So, uh yeah. Your auntie was out of it, girl. So, I said I need to get this done. Before the weekend is up. But if y'all join me, I had so much fun. Thank you to everybody that joined. I went back and I made a couple of y'all moderators. Um, and I will be back on my regular schedule. So every Friday night, we will do Sip and Chill. So if you missed last night, you can join me again this Friday. Friday night, 9 o'clock, between 9 and 9, 10 -ish. You know I be on um, CP time sometimes. But um, anyway, y'all, this episode um, of Love After Lockup last night, it was good. It was good. I had to go back and watch it because, you know, I'm a little tipsy. But it was good, y'all. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. Y'all already know before we get started. <laughs> Bitch, what keto? I got my banana mango green tea on deck, y'all. I am addicted to this damn green tea. If y'all got an H-E-B near y'all, y'all need to get this. Banana mango green tea. It's a glare and it don't want to show up like it needs to show up. But man, this tea, this tea is crinac. Woo! But yeah, let's start with Brittany and Marcelino, right? So you know she wants to um, make contact with her older two kids that were put up for adoption. You know, she was 15 and 16 when she had both of them. She had them by this 30-year-old dude who basically exploited her out there, had her committing crimes, doing all kind of crazy shit. She ended up having babies by him while she was in jail. When she was in jail, the kids ended up going up for adoption. Now, she was able to get information about, like, her court records, not all the actual documents. But in order for her to be able to see those documents, see if the adoption was sealed, see if it was, like, a closed adoption, an open adoption, and all that is going to take so much more damn time. But what she was able to see is from the paperwork that the courts actually reached out to her baby daddy, who was 30 at the time, she was 16, tried to get in contact with him to see if he would be able to take the kids. Now, anybody else, I know damn sure in the state of Texas, they're going to prosecute somebody goddamn ass. That's a little, you know, pedophile-ish. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's frowned upon for your for you to contact the courts because your 16 year old baby mama can't take the kids so you 30 you want to take the kids like what normal court does that so she's like you know Brittany just feels broken because now that she's changed her life around basically she's having to like pick up and and clean up all of the mistakes for her past so that she can sort of move on and and I feel bad for Brittany because y'all already know she fighting she fighting hard like she she fighting to stay you know on the straight and narrow path that she's on so it is heartbreaking to see her you know try to go so hard for something only to sort of get knocked back and and basically you know she she doesn't know where she's gonna go with the whole thing of course her lawyer did tell her it was gonna be some time now lady y'all she does end up going online and doing a google search for her baby daddy because she said she needs to get in contact with him because it's just some shit she gotta get off her damn chest now mind you last time she seen him she was 16 she said she was pregnant this nigga had got arrested for stealing the flat screen tv out of a goddamn office building nigga the fuck you big dummy well, he's in jail right now for what else, whatever else we don't goddamn know. But she does see that his parole date is coming up the next month. So, 
she know where that nigga gonna be, when he gonna be there, and how the hell he gonna be there, and how long he gonna be there. So she's debating whether or not she wants to go there basically to his parole hearing or whenever it is that he gets out to confront him and be like, nigga, some shit, I gotta get off my goddamn chest. Although Marcelino is there, he's, you know, protective of her, he supports her, she still is like, okay, I don't want this crazy ass Puerto Rican dude to snap and go fucking left on my fucked up baby daddy. Trust me, I already want to take his whole damn head off his body, but I can't do that. But y'all, I like Marcelino and Britney, and I really love how Marcelino protects and he loves Britney. He batshit crazy, and I hope he done got him a real goddamn job now. You ain't out here gambling and shit because, nigga, you got, you got shit to do, but I do love their relationship, y'all. Andrew and Lamar, y'all. Lord, Loke done took his wifey out, you know what I'm saying, on little crimp dinner, trying to get closer back to his wife, you know what I'm saying, Loke? She says she's finding it hard to reconnect with her husband. How is it hard to reconnect with your husband? That don't make no damn sense to me. Then they get to talking about the whole living situation. He like, she says she's lonely. She's tired of going to bed at night. I was with him. He said, nigga, you moved. I ain't moved to Utah. You move. The fuck? Now, she says when he was in prison, his days and his nights were fully committed to her. Now that he's out, he feels like he wants to commit to everything else and then her. Look here, Andrea, uh, Miss Bust Down Claws girl. You know good and damn well he ain't had shit to do in prison. So, of course, you're going to be his day and night and night and day and all of that in between. Because he ain't got shit else to do. What is he going to do? Go to arts and crafts? No. What the nigga finna build some shit? No. He had nothing else better to do but to be on your ass 24-7 when he was locked up. So, yeah, now that he out, like he said, he was incarcerated for so long. Now he got a little bit of freedom. You trying to be the warden around this bitch. He not with that, though. He ain't with that. Now, she does bring up the whole idea of possibly them getting a divorce. Now, he's actually, it seems like he's willing to make a compromise when it comes to the whole moving thing, if it's something that they can sort of meet with halfway, although he kind of is, but kind of not, because y'all already know, the nigga ain't going to Utah, and she ain't going to L.A., so I'm going to need you niggas to meet up in the middle, you know what I'm saying? Meet up in the goddamn middle, because he damn sure don't want to get no damn divorce, because, I mean, he like divorces, that's like, that's the, the, you don't get married to get divorced. And I'm completely in there with goddamn uh, Lamar. I done told my husband that nigga, I got papers on your ass. <laughs> you ain't gonna know goddamn where it's to death do us part. Angela and Tony, y'all. Girl, so my girl, Big Ange, done went and spied on goddamn Tony all goddamn night just for this nigga to be in that stayed up in the house because he knows something was going on. He's stupid, but he not dumb. He knew something. Well, I take that back. He dumb, dumb, but he not stupid. So that nigga wasn't finna make a move and go no goddamn well because he knew that your ass was watching. Girl, Big Ange come crawling up in the bed in the middle of the goddamn night with a dress on and everything after she done smoked a whole 12-carton pack a Bissin and Hedges and Paul Malls, then probably took back a whole case of Schlitz Malt liquor, then you want to crawl up in the bed and be with this nigga, right? Wake up the next goddamn morning. He like, hello, like I thought you were standing at a Donna Faye. Well, I didn't, Tony. I was sitting in the driveway and I was watching you all night and you did everything you were supposed to do and that's good for you. I appreciate that, Tony. Tony like, nigga, really? You sitting up here spying on my ass like this, like, nigga, I'm, I'm dumb, but I'm not stupid. Like, I knew not to do nothing because I knew your ass wasn't going to be too goddamn far away. Now, she going to tell his ass, I just don't understand, Tony, why you just can't commit. You got everything here taken care of. I just don't understand it. Baby, this nigga Tony going to have the nerve to tell her, look here, I'm going to need you to learn some respect. Put some respect. Oh my name. You're getting out of line. You're talking out the side of your neck and I'm a killing. Don't, don't push me. I don't want to have to hurt you. But bitch, you're going to have to learn some damn respect. I was like, oh, I know Ange finna steal off on his ass. Ange gonna say, you know what, Tony? I'm done. I'm going to work, Tony. So she gets up and she leaves. I said, oh no, no, Ange. You you want me to give him five on the black hand side? Bitch, that's your crib. How did they gonna tell you? You got to learn some respect on his name at your place. 
Try the next morning, they riding in the car. He kissing her on the hand. They done made up. She say that him and the prostitute wasn't together when we weren't sleeping together when he was with the prostitutes. But I'm hoping all that's going to change. Nigga, what? So basically, you forgave him because you ready to get you some good, good goosing in. So you don't want to have forgave him. Child, okay, Big Ange, you like it, I love you. You don't get here and get you some more of it. Child, she ends up taking Tony to meet Brother Joey at the church. I'm guessing Brother Joey is a relationship counselor because she done sprung up a whole counseling session on this nigga. Didn't even goddamn know. Brother Joey's like, well, why don't you tell me what's going on with you, Tony? How you doing on Brother Joey? Of the first missionary, brotherly, friendly Baptist church, community, Lord and thy Savior. Hallelujah. How can I help you, Tony? <laughs> Lord, forgive me. You know I ain't got no damn sense. Lord, forgive me. He like, well, he ends up breaking Tony down. Tony was like, look here, I was abused as a child. My father abused. My mama didn't do shit about it. And I just feel like I'm a victim, and I just feel like I just can't, I don't know what to do with myself. So Angela sees this vulnerability from Tony. She's like, I knew he had some kind of demons in him. And I'm going to be there to take care of him and his demons. Now she want to take care of his ass, because now she sees that he done opened up, and he's vulnerable and all this shit. But like Tony said, you know, he wants to make it work. You know, he cried and all of that. He says, you know, I want to make this work with Big Ange. God damn it, she all the purse strings. Nigga, you gonna have to make that shit work. Whoo! Michael and Sarah. So, y'all, we pick up where they left off. They in each other's faces arguing. She got her black scent on swole all in his face. Sit down. Sit down. She get all in his face and what's that I smell on your motherfucking breath? He like, what? Alcohol. He say, bitch, I be here with you the whole goddamn time. She said, oh, oh, bitch. What? Oh, 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 bitch. Then she wants to kick him out the goddamn house, right? Because he done called you a bitch. After she kicks him out, she tries to slam the door on him. Clip this nigga in the goddamn back. Like, oh, I know that shit hurt. Probably clipped him on the back of his, his shin right there. Who you know how I clip you with the back of the cart when your baby pushing the cart? Ow! Take your whole fucking ankle out in the back. I bet you that's what she goddamn did to his ass. Clip that nigga with a goddamn basket. <laughs> After she kicks him out, then she goes right back out there outside and starts arguing with his ass. Y'all, they up in each other's goddamn face. He doesn't understand why Sarah is so upset. Now, like I said on the last review, I'm not team Sarah or team May because both of them dumb as hell for fucking with goddamn tin head ass Michael. Oh, that boy got a lot on his goddamn mind. And you need to get this line and part right here. Get this part. Either get you some, you need you some good even edge control. Get you some of that and just get you one of these, you know, one of these good, good brushes. Just lay that shit down. Now you need to do something with yourself. He doesn't understand that Sarah ain't upset. Well, yeah, I take that back. She is upset that he got a whole nother bitch there to see her kids. But at the same time, nigga, you just come in like it ain't nothing and feel like just because you the daddy that you got all these fucking rights. Now, get, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you don't, but nigga, you don't do nothing that's conducive of being a damn daddy to come in and feel like you have the right to make all these decisions when it comes to these babies. Fuck you and the horse that you got damn rode in on. You wrong for that. And that's what Sarah is upset about. It probably got, it's 50-50. 50, 50. 50, yes, yeah, she wants your ass back, but the other 50, she wants you to be there for your fucking kids. And the fact that she don't get that, that you think it's okay for you to have your kids around some random bitch, that say something about you, nigga. How so they arguing, going back and forth. She ends up breaking down out in the front yard, talking to Purdue. I don't know what to do. You just, I don't know what to do. You know what the fuck to do. You goddamn, you go out there and you file something on his ass. He don't want to be there to do what he got to do with them goddamn kids. Y'all need to have some court orders in place because if he is trying to step up and do something for them kids, baby, look here. You ain't going to have no choice but to let him be a part of them babies' lives. That's just what it is. He they daddy now. If he trying to step up and be there for them kids, goddamn it, bitch, don't you block that. You let that nigga be there for his babies. But that nigga need to get his shit together. That's just what it is. Child, later on, he end up going back to this hotel with Maria and her big scoop ball head ass. Telling her everything that happened. This bitch over here running her mouth with her goddamn two cents. I don't see what the problem is. What woman would sit and hold on to a man? Her little bubble 
got pops. Oh, well, that's what she get. And she just needs to let you see your child. And if she don't, oh, well, then it's on a plan B. Bitch, what's plan B? What is plan B? Because don't you got fucking kids? How dare you as a woman even fix your mouth as a mother to say some shit like that? Y'all, I'm, I'm not feeling this, Maria, bitch. I'm not feeling her. You don't know Megan or Sarah for you to talk sideways out your mouth about Mike. And bitch, what TV you ain't been watching for the last couple of whatevers that you don't know Mike is a fuckboy? Bitch, I hope he use you for every goddamn thing you got. Just because you're going sideways off on these other two females that you don't know a damn thing about. I hope he run up. I hope your credit score go from a 6 to a 320. I hope Rena Center come and take all your goddamn furniture. And I hope you don't ever qualify for a goddamn Target card, bitch. With your big head ass. Y'all, so we got John at the halfway house. His sister done came to visit. Sister like, all right, now, nigga, what's your plan now? Because, nigga, we can't keep on doing this goddamn shit. You too grown to be in and out of goddamn prison of some bullshit. And then you in and out of prison of this big-head bitch, Lacey. Like, what the hell is going on? John say, I just got to get Lacey back in my corner. Once I get her down, bada-bing, bada-boom. I know I'm in there. Sister like, look here. I ain't like the bitch 15 years ago, and I don't like the bitch now. Mama and daddy don't like her ass neither. So let me tell you this. You get back with this big-head bitch, you end up going back to jail. Me, mama, daddy. We out the shit. You call that big head bitch so she can get you out. Because we ain't fit to have a goddamn thing to do with it. John say, come hella hot water. He gonna get his lacy back. That's a crazy nigga. Shane, I'm gonna need you to watch your goddamn back on that nigga right there. So y'all later on, Shane and Lacey end up going roller skating. They have a little cute little romantical. I like going roller skating, me and my husband. We do that too. You know what I'm saying? We want to be kitty and day night to be touchy and feeling on it. So, they went roller skating or whatever. It was real cute, child. So, he decides it's a perfect time to tell her that he cheated on her before they got married. Of course, Lacey gets pissed off. What do you mean? Oh, girl, before they started roller, co uh, roller skating, it was so goddamn funny. She's like, oh, you look so hot roller skating. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, bitch, shut up. Oh, I can't say the goddamn voice. He ends up telling her that he cheated on her before they got married. She's like, well, why would she marry me? Why didn't she do that? Of course, she got pissed off. She got up, left this nigga at the goddamn skating rink. Child, now who you gonna call? Your mama done left you. <laughs> your sugar mama done left your ass. What you finna do? You know you ain't got no money for no goddamn Uber. Nigga, you finna have to foot it home with your dumb ass. Why you end up telling that girl that? You done end up pushed her right into the arms of John. And she was already looking for a reason to run back to John. And you just done gave her a goddamn reason to. Y'all, this damn episode was funny. I'm ready to see the, I'm ready to see this damn Sarah and Maria meet up. Because Maria, bitch, <laughs> you got the right one. Because, baby... It wouldn't have been no goddamn body else. Y'all already know. If y'all done seen this, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.